Hello and welcome to Bleed Bow Gladiator Zero Two Hero Edition. Similar in a similar fashion to my previous Zero Two Hero series, which was done for Cleave of Rage last season in 323. This one is going to cover Bleed Bow Gladiator in 324. From what I've done all the way through Feared, as you've seen in the intro clip. This build basically does it all with a few exceptions here and there. It's a very efficient, fast mapper. It can do all the content that I have personally done. I haven't tested just a, a few things. I haven't done heists. I haven't done expeditions as I don't like to do that content in general. And I did basically everything else. Most of the things you will kill in one hit, however, as it is a dot build, you will have to wait for a certain amount of time until an enemy dies. Now, because it uses rest slot and volatility and maximum, more maximum attack damage, more maximum physical damage, you will sometimes have to reapply your snipes to get the maximum possible outcome. On average, you won't need to do it, but there's that. However, this build has one little problem and that's why I'm making this build guide now so I don't have to address this later and that is bleed is dot damage capped which is around 35.67 million damage the game cannot calculate more so anything you have above that certain amount you won't even see. The reason why I stopped there was because I don't want to invest in a bow. I want to make a bow from the graveyard, which I still haven't done. I will do that eventually. The league is only two weeks old at this point. But I have a random thicket bow, which is not the best bow before you annihilate me in the comments. It's not the best bow. Citadel bow is the best bow for pure physical damage. However, I bought it for two and a half divines. I six linked it myself, so that was a steal. Now, as you can see, the, the map is simply melting. I will just let it, let it finish playing and talk about just some other annoyances. Now, there are some map mods, and that's why I made a regex you could see in my previous videos that are absolutely annoying, which is uh, cannot regen. We need mana, even though we have mana leech. Um, block, reduced block and recovery and, and whatnot. So that's reduced armor. That's basically the same mod. That's annoying. Physical reflect is always annoying. You can die basically from the, from the physical hit. So that's what I would avoid. Reduced effect of non-curses is huge as that's all our defense and offense. And like monster physicals as extra elements. So that will cause you to do some uh, re-rolling of maps and whatnot. What I do is I have a tab called map regex. I roll all my things. I type in the regex. And then I also do like crit. And see if there are any like monsters criticals. I delete that one as well. So I just scour and re it. Now I will go over the gear through every, every single piece and upgrade path. First, let me cover the upgrade path. So I'm currently at level 98. We still have 20 minutes before the realms restart for the update. I couldn't sleep, sorry. And for the actual build guide itself that I originally made, there are a few changes. Number one, once you get more gear, you remove Mirage Archer and you add... Uh, what was it? You add Vicious Projectiles or Deadly Ailments. I think it's Deadly Ailments that you add later. So that's overpowering it. Number two, Cruelty Support. Once you get over the medium medium budget which is like 20 to 30 divines cruelty even before then cruelty support becomes obsolete because the moment you can put any awakened gem it overpowers cruelty by a good significant margin and it's completely irrelevant as cruelty caps to 40 percent also the effect of cruelty only applies up to the maximum effect of cruelty which is 40 percent which then is irrelevant as you will reach that like this so then cruelty just becomes obsolete. Next one, when it comes to sniping, snipe is a hold button, which it gets interrupted if you flame dash, of course. However, if you use frost blink, you can hold the snipe, frost blink, and still hold the snipe, and it will work. I found that one a little bit annoying when it comes to maps, because then you need like blink arrow and whatnot, so I prefer to use flame dash. Now that's out of the way. 
here's how the character works. You have your own ascendancies, four ascendancy points, and the fifth one added inspirational. And the ascendancy is basically arena challengers. You need to have an st a stance skill, pardon, a stance skill for ranged characters that's called flesh and stone for melee characters that's called blood and sand i know it can be confusing but that's for range so flesh and stone is for range and that's how you get challenger charges now to go over the gear and to go over the progression from the original video so please do watch the beginner guide this one is not beginner friendly as much but the other one is you want to get through spell suppression on on your on your passive skill tree once you get spell suppression on your gear and evasion armor base you want to remove that spell suppression and add cluster jewels first you add large ones then you add medium ones the more points you have unnatural instinct you add and then these points basically get transformed to cluster jewel now there is um, a little bit of a problem with this lovely jewel, Elegant Hubris. You do not have to get the Caspero one for Supreme Ostentation. However, you will need like 90 more intelligence and, and whatnot. So that you can fix by having two, two rings, both with like 50 intelligence. You won't lose too much on stats, but if you want to go with uh, two Joffrey's ends which is perfectly fine if you do want to go for. I would recommend getting a, a solid bow before getting this one because this one can get really expensive. Um, you would uh, you would grab that one without Supreme Ostentation and GG well played. That's basically it. Extra passive points from these two for six extra passive points you could use as an example because we have um, Impossible Escape for Let Shade. You can put them here. That's basically it, and you will get more damage over time multiplayer. Now, for Leth Shade, the reason why I chose Impossible Escape was because of uh, efficiency. It gives you the most life and the most damage over time multiplayer than anywhere else on the tree without doing any extra shenanigans. What do I mean by shenanigans? Without doing shenanigans with this jewel. Because you can get here, like... Um, physical damage, damage over time, another Joffrey's, right? And then you would take Glancing Blows, you would remove this point, you would add this, you would add Sanctum of Thought, and that's it. I would not suggest doing this, because then that jewel skyrockets in price. So that's that. When it comes to regular jewels, we have your regular Corrupted Blood, Watcher's Eye, which is 15 to 20, 30 Divines, depending on the price, damage over time multi while affected by Malevolence, and reduced extra damage from crits. Now, I would suggest taking reduced extra damage from crits. We don't need this much damage extra, like, whatever. Um, and just buy the, the cheapest one that you can find, and GG well played, you will get protected from crits. So 30% there, and 50-ish percent there. That's 83% reduced damage from crits. You'll be fine, right? And the regular ones, Forbidden Flesh and Flame, for Inspirational, which gives us banner costs uh, nothing, and which gives us 30% increased air, um, 30 increased effect of all auras, which give us defenses, offenses, and everything. I'm sorry for rushing, It's the, the timer is uh, a little bit annoying. Then, uh, Life Mastery skills uh, cost life instead of 30% of mana cost life, that's completely standard. Everything else that didn't change besides this. I might get ripped to shreds because some people say Season Sword play is an annoying node and whatnot and it's irrelevant and whatnot. But let me tell you something. When you have monsters that block your attacks, it's so gosh darn it annoying. It's almost as annoying as monsters have a chance to avoid bleeding. Get this, it will save your life. Okay. Now, for the actual POB itself. So, we are going to go into a deep dive into POB. This video will be around 20 minutes long, I hope. We are doing roughly 20 million damage unless you go with, um, with something else. I think it's like you can go with additional maim or... Or something else you can you can if you go regular one it's, it's still the same uber bosses are taking six million that's completely fine you can also add uh, onslaught challenger charges you can add that as well i personally don't like to do my flasks are off as i like to have them off while i do these type of guides also my skills for my puncture and snipe i don't have fully fully awakened everything 
I don't have 21 volatility, deadly ailments is not awakened, these are not level 5, so you can get damage there as well. Plus, the bow is kind of <laughs> trash because it's a thicket bow, you can get a better citadel bow or craft one yourself from the graveyard. And that's going to give you more than, uh, than this amount of damage. 20 million is completely fine. We that's, of course, included with 7 snipes with pride maximum effect and stance blood stands. You can do sand stands, that will reduce damage, you can do initial effect, that will reduce it as well, but if you want to, to do bosses, as you've seen me do, just grab blood stands. Of course, enemies are moving, enemies are bleeding, and there's one ensnare on them. While I'm there on the topic of ensnare, if your ensnare and uh, ensnare again and frenzy arrow cost zero mana, but they cost life, they will always proc, as you can see, while I'm channeling snipe, they will always proc so keep that in mind that also is included every time you press um, your split arrow now before anyone asks split arrow had the demonic split arrow effect i put it on my second character as i will i made um another one for split arrow puncture which is a raider with rupturing but anyways, weapon 1, uh, Thicket Bow is okay, get any with uh, 450, 550, 650 PDPS, any bow that you can, then later on you can add uh, a Citadel Bow, which is going to give you more physical damage with sword weapons by physical damage, not by PDPS. PDPS 600, that includes attack speed in it. Attack speed just helps with pulling the snipe. More PDPS, better, however, bow becomes, like, after you get over 6, 650 PDPS, the bow then becomes the last thing that you will upgrade, because there's, it, there's no need to, to upgrade the bow, everything melts. Um, quiver is around 200C, you need damage over time multi, fizz damage over time multi, attack speed is a bonus, fire resistance bonus, damage with bow skills is an exalted orb slam, fizz damage to attacks, you can do life, that's fine, I found that 3.9k life was pretty fine. Helmet I bought as a base, armor evasion based helmet. You can also take the um, you can also take the mastery here that basically armor and evasion mastery immune to bleeding if equipped helmet has higher armor than evasion rating so you can do that one. However, I found it irrelevant with like the amount of armor that we have. I found it absolutely irrelevant. Uh, I crafted this one myself. This one myself. I bought chance to suppress spell damage fracture and then slammed chaos resistance on it until I was satisfied. The rest is searing and eater. That's you can you can do whenever. Body armor I bought for around one D, maybe two. I think it was one. Six linked myself with Morgan. Morgan is great. So you get uh, Einhar Beast, you get Copy Beast, and you get uh, Shadowed Crow, Scarab. You put them all together in a map, then go farm that, then go back to Einkar, you buy Kray Kick Sand Spitter. Kray Kick Sand Spitter? Sand Spitter. <laughs> Kray Kick Sand Spitter, and then you can get a 6 link for <laughs> free. Don't use fusings. Don't waste fusings. Now, that's for body armor. Body armor is basically a stat stick. Um, how can we improve all of this gear? You can just slap more prefixes for armor. That's it. Um, gloves, I basically um, crafted myself, chance to suppress spell damage, I bought that one for around 2, 2.5 uh, D for a base, I bought multiple bases and then I sold some because I was uh, lucky to roll some very, very good uh, accuracy modifiers, but I did the same, tier 2 chaos essence and uh, GG. Now for boots, boots I outright bought for 5 divines, this is of course armor evasion rating boots. And you can also do these ones yourself, chance to suppress spell damage, and then uh, you can do torment essences, and then do chance to avoid being shocked with um, searing exarch, and then you can do orb of conflict to increase the, the modifier values. I burned through three divines worth of essences to, to get it on the base that I have, that I still have here, to get like spell suppression, just buy the boots out, right? Please save yourself some money and time. Um, Amulet, Owls Uprising, 10.5, the pretty self-explanatory, Pride has no reservation. Before this one, you need to have a regular Stastic Amulet, that's whatever. Uh, Ring with Curse Enemies Vulnerability, Attack Damage, Leech says Mana helps so you don't get it on a Jewel, but this was a uh, really lucky, well, we can call it a Snipe, I bought it for four, around 4.1D at the time for 700c basically a stat stick right i don't need any more um chaos res so i could buy any other 
and the ring. You can you can craft this one yourself. You can do whatever and then have an empty empty suffix and then warlord slam. Good luck. But I basically bought it for four D. Let's say uh, this one I bought for around two D. The the second ring. And oh, I didn't edit the price. Uh, I bought for around 2D, and this basically is a complete and utter stat stick, right? So instead of uh, all two elemental resistances, which we really don't 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 need, you can you can get this lightning somewhere else. That's completely fine. I did not quality my uh, my rings, so keep that in mind. You can get a stat stick. Same with this one. You can do vulnerability instead of lightning res. You can get the stat stick, and then you can swap resistances around if you do not get the supreme ostentation here now for reslatha you want more more less less i bought uh 33 or 34 less and 39 39 more that's why it's 46 40 and that's basically it flasks i've already written you can do whatever the the heck you want some things help some not cluster jewels large ones are set in stone that's basically it you gotta splurge out maybe two divines now for them so they are set in stone, sadly. Forbidden Flame and Flesh are set in stone and how much they have cost. Impossible Escape um, with Let Shade, I have explained. And everything else is basically the same, but the Medium Cluster Jewels. Now, Student of Decay, Wasting Affliction is the best one. However, if you don't have the currency for that one, you can do Brute for Potency or you can do anything else. Flow of Life. But Student of Decay is mandatory for Chaos Resistance. We are basically Chaos Resistance capped. Now, I will just go over gear progression from the moment you start. It's a very cheap build up to this point. It's like 80, 90. It's up to 100 divines to get it to, to bleed dot cap when you include the weapon. Because weapon is around 15 to 20 D. So that will make it around uh, 100 D build. But here's how it works. You need 20, 30, 40 C to set it up from maps to, to get go without spell suppression. So you can go on the right side follow my beginner guide then once you get spell suppression you remove you remove things up to charisma if you don't have golden oils so you remove up to there you add other stuff on the tree that's when you can actually remove these points and go down here you don't have to take elegant hubris that's completely fine you can you can leave that and add the points somewhere else worst case scenario add uh, the dexterity and intelligence from uh, from there add uh, add that um then once you get, once you fill in your spell suppression, you can get vulnerability on your um, gloves. You can, as a corrupt, you can get a vulnerability on a ring. Any cheap ring will work. That's completely fine. Once you get the um, a natural instinct, before you get a natural instinct, I go right side for phasing, phasing and then leech. The reason why I go phasing is when when you walk through enemies enemies tend to miss you a lot but if you go left side yes you will get more damage but uh, you will lose phasing well you won't even gain phasing and sometimes you can get stuck in mobs and mobs will just maul you to death so i just go with the defensive option so please do yourself a favor play with that you're going to love it and of course leech before you get charisma anoint you can get uh, mana leech anoint or you can just grab grab this that's fine or you can grab leech on a jewel it's a prefix so life and then leech and then whatever else you can do that one um when it comes to anything else after after you get after you get this that's your your medium cluster and once you get more levels 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 you will just fill in the tree the last two points what i would do i would just either add life or i would just add damage over time multiplier like that's basically it then um, once you get uh, bleed bleed dot capped you can safely remove let shade and do whatever the hell you want with an additional with an additional jewel socket that's completely up to you you can literally put uh, put um Cirrus's jewel here to then grab uh, like a large one or maybe a very large one you can do however you'd like i'm not going to go over this build at all i'm making a different version and another version that you can do so i gave you two I gave you one with the attributes, one without the attributes. And the last one you can do is with Usurper Spendence and Olesia's Delight, which is Frenzy Charges. And then instead of focusing on the left side of the tree, we focus on the right side of the tree. But I'm making a better version now, which is going to be Crit Rupturing Raider. So you can see that one on streams. As you've seen, this is a very, very simple build. If you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the description below or ask me in my streams. I stream almost daily, other than Friday. And um, 
yeah, you can hop on the Discord as well. Feel free to ask any questions. The build works perfectly fine. It's suitable for everything. However, one disclaimer, there are 17 maps. I only done two. I've failed both of them because of the time it takes to pull the snipe. So for me, currently not tier 17 uh, viable. I would just do a regular, regular damage build instead of doing a bleed. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you like this uh, Zero to Hero edition. I will be upgrading to crit rupturing raider and you can see that of course live if you like the video please do give it a like please do sub if you don't mind i keep forgetting these outros <laughs> comment down below if you have anything anything else to add thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video